What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Poe Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Poe Rowe and What's the Numbers I provided. Today, we're back on the profile piece. This one is on El Mago. In this profile piece, we're going to talk about his time coming up in Mexico and Los Angeles, California. After that, we'll take a look at El Mago's foray into the drug underworld where he will make a name for himself pretty quickly. Then, we must break down his runners with the law and eventual jail time that El Mago would do and the accusations on his name that will follow him once released. And finally, we will highlight his chain of restaurants and food trucks that El Mago will open before dissecting the details surrounding his death. El Mago, real name Eduardo Escobedo, was born in the United States and spent a lot of time in Mexico during his childhood. He was raised in East Los Angeles, California and attended Garfield High School in East LA where he met his wife before graduating from a continuation school. El Mago was a childhood friend of Ivan Archvaldo Guzman Salazar, who was the oldest son of Sinaloa cartel boss El Chapo. Eventually, El Mago got into the drug game and was a distributor of marijuana in Los Angeles for El Chapo and his son Ivan. In 2008, El Mago was accused of ordering the death of another drug trafficker named Jose Luis Macias, a.k.a. El Garito who was gunned down in his Bentley on the 101 freeway. Although El Mago didn't get convicted for the murder, his brother and a friend were and are now serving a life sentence for killing El Garito, who was only 25 years old at the time of his death. El Mago and El Garito supposedly knew each other since kids and were competing for the top spot in the area. Then, in July 2011, El Mago, who was 27 at the time, was arrested, leaving a stash house in the West Adams neighborhood where police found a ton of marijuana. Now on the radar of law enforcement after the murder of El Garito and the ton of marijuana found at the stash house, El Mago began to feel the pressure from both the feds and local authorities. In October of 2013, El Mago was caught on a wiretap speaking with El Chapo's son Ivan about smuggling more than five tons of marijuana through a tunnel under the U.S.-Mexico border. But the authorities who were listening on the conversation were able to get the drop on Ivan and El Mago and seize 2.7 tons of cannabis from a courier who was allegedly working for El Mago. According to the feds, the sale of marijuana wasn't the only business El Mago and Ivan had with each other. Allegedly, El Mago was also helping Ivan launder drug money through the purchases of sports cars that were shipped to Kulikan. Federal agents, while listening to a wiretap phone call between Ivan and El Mago, determined that El Mago used a false name to buy two Lamborghinis from a dealership in Newport Beach, California. El Mago was eventually stopped by the police driving one of the cars, which was a $175,000 Marcielago. The feds found out that the Lamborghini was purchased with a series of cash deposits just beneath the $10,000 threshold that triggers a bank reporting requirement, which allowed them to get a warrant to seize the car. El Mago also purchased a Nissan GTR for Ivan, along with a $175,000 McLaren, both of which ended up getting seized in 2014 by the Mexican authorities in Culiacan, Mexico. El Mago was arrested later in 2014 while living in a sprawling Granada Hills home with a pool and tennis court. DEA agents searched El Mago and found him carrying a large amount of cash, four phones, and keys to five different cars. A father of four, El Mago claimed his annual income of about $200,000 came from a hair business he owned with his wife that imported hair extensions and sold them for a marked up price. El Mago also reported owning a record label, which was named Magic Records Corporation. Federal agents suspected El Mago was using the hair company's accounts to launder drug money, pointing to a $50,000 wire transfer from a London drug dealer who was later arrested for shipping cocaine from Mexico to London on British Airways flights. El Mago would end up pleading guilty to conspiring to distribute 10,000 kilos of marijuana and money laundering. He was sentenced to 57 months and served 4 years and 9 months of that sentence in federal prison. He was released in 2018 and started a new life in the food business with his own chain of restaurants and food trucks called Besabachi. He had multiple locations and was expanding them more frequently. El Mago also made a personal public Instagram page where you could see him being a father to his kids and living the good life. He also had an amazing social life and was seen in pics partying with American and Mexican celebrities all the time. From the outside looking in, El Mago looked to be living the American dream 
as a law-abiding citizen, although some still believe he was still in the drug game. Other rumors of him being a snitch were floating around also, but were mostly just on the internet, because Elmago was still moving around comfortably in his old East LA neighborhood. But all that would come to an end in November of 2023, when Elmago would be shot and killed in Los Angeles on Thanksgiving morning. The details surrounding the shooting are scarce, but what we do know is that police were called to the scene in the Willowbrook section of Los Angeles around 8.30 a.m. Once they arrived, officers found two men dead and another injured in the parking lot, surrounded by warehouses and shipping containers. All three men had been shot, and a local business owner told police that one of the warehouses in the area is rented out for parties on a regular basis. Right now, the motive for the shooting isn't clear, but a few different scenarios are being looked at. El Maga was 39 years old at the time of his death. But yo, it's What's the Numbers TV. There's a quick profile piece on El Mago, a.k.a. the magician, real name Eddie Escobedo. Now, you know, there's a lot to unpack with the shooting. You know, we're going to start with the other man that was killed at the scene. He was allegedly an 18th Street gang member. You know, that's a Mexican gang out there in California, L.A. on the West Coast. You know, he had just got released from jail in December of 2022. You know, some say it was just a petty argument. Some say it was payback for El Garitos. Others say it was a robbery going wrong. Right now, it's too early to call, honestly. But, you know, he died. The gang member that just got released died. And the kid and the person, this third person they're saying I was shot, they're saying was his son. You know, some people say Magu was a snitch. But if he was, all, I, he wasn't hiding. He was out partying all the time. He still like he was getting money. He had a bunch of restaurants. I don't know. You know, that's what some people were saying. He tried to snitch, get out of jail. But if it was just weed charges... I don't know if he had to snitch or not, but, you know, that's that's a lot of, they talk about that a lot on the internet and things like that. I've seen a lot of people saying that, that he might have been informing his son. I'm not exactly sure. I got to dive, I, the paperwork I've seen, I haven't seen nothing like that. But, I, you know, maybe I'll do a deep dive in, for myself just for clarification. But, you know, there's some rumors that was out there. Like I say, he was active on social media, balling, watch game crazy. You know what I'm saying? He was doing his thing, like, as far as, like, getting money, had a, um, a bunch of businesses out in L.A. that was looking like they was getting to the bag, you know, legal money. He was partying with celebrities, Floyd Mayweather, Mexican um, celebrities, or the Corridos, which is like the songs. He had a few of those about him. You know, if you into that, if you know a bit about the Mexican um, culture and Mexico and the cartels and all, they got these things called Corridos where they usually, you know, make songs about basically how people do in America when they make songs about dudes that's out there getting money, doing their thing, killing all type. They put it in their music. And supposedly El Mago had a bunch of um, Corridos about him. Now, this is the thing. Now, some people say it's, it, he shot, the guy shot El Mago, and they saying his son ended up shooting the guy. I don't know how true it is. Like I said, it's an open investigation. But, you know, these are just rumors that's out there in the, in the streets right now. And as far as, like, the story, it hasn't really been cleared up. Like I said, which is a generalization of what the police seen when they pulled up to the, to, to the, to the scene of the shooting. So... It was a party going on at those warehouses. I guess they throw like, you know, after the club. I guess they bring a Mexican band or two and they be out in those warehouses, you know, just playing, you know, the, the mariachi bands and all that. Probably just be partying until the wee hours of the morning. And I guess like 8 in the morning when everybody was leaving out, that's when the situation took place. So like I said, El Mago had a bunch of things, you know, on his name. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was known, known member um, a known um, drug dealer, you know, went to jail. Now he was a business, successful businessman. Looked like he was getting money, lived in a nice, nice house, a bunch of kids, his sons. You know, he was still around. His old neighborhood still moving around. So it's a lot of things. Then you take the whole informant thing and the whole the thing with El Garito. It's a lot. It could come from anywhere, and I really don't know for sure. And on top of that, they saying he was one of the, he was Sinaloa cartels basically main distributor at one time in California. Now, I don't know if that was directly under El Chapo, but this is why a lot of those arrests was why El Chapo was still home, like in 2008 and 2014. You know, El Chapo was still out during that time. But they're saying he was, he was Ivan's right-hand man in the States and all that, which is the Chapitos now, which is that's who's running El Chapo's side of the cartel, his sons known as the Chapitos. So, like I said, this is a quick profile piece. You know, I like to switch it up, do different things. And this what this one was. Shout out to um, the whole California. Shout out to Mexico. We touch on all different topics. This was Numbers TV. Go follow the Instagram. Subscribe to the live stream and Clips channel. Follow Batty Bills on IG. Salute Federal A. And to salute, salute to all the members of the channel, man. We appreciate y'all, man. It's what's Numbers TV, Poro. 
Be back before you know it, man. I'm out of here. Peace.